Harry Rosenblum, one of the owners of the Brooklyn Kitchen, and today we're going to talk about some vintage kitchen tools. We have a large collection of out of print cookbooks here at the Brooklyn Kitchen uh, behind me that you're welcome to come and take a look at, look for recipes, look for ideas anytime. And we also have a large collection of vintage tools uh, here at the Brooklyn Kitchen, uh, many of which are you know, just as useful today as when they were originally sold, and some of which are you know, pretty much obsolete. But we're going to start taking a look at those and start doing a series on our vintage collection. Today we're going to talk about juicers. I'm going to start off with this classic glass example. Um, everybody's probably seen one of these. It's a really old design and is great for juicing, you know, pretty much any small citrus. Wouldn't really work for grapefruit, but something like lemon. This one is designed so that it has some areas to catch the seeds as you juice your lemon. And you can see it's made short work of getting pretty much all the juice. Totally useful, still made just the same as this, and great for juicing citrus. So now we're going to move on to a handheld juicer made by the Knapp Manufacturing Company. Uh, this juicer is probably made sometime after World War II. And basically, open it up like this, hold your orange in like that, flip it over, and hold the handles together while you spin, and then fresh squeezed orange juice. Next up, we've got the Handy Andy Juice Extractor, made by the Handy Andy Specialty Company of Long Island City. Lift up the handle, place the orange there, make sure you've got a glass underneath, and then turn the handle while pressing down, and you've got some orange juice. So you might be wondering what these other two juicers are uh, from the beginning. These are meat juice presses. In the middle part of the 19th century, it was believed that all of the nutrients contained in meat were in the liquid. So if you were invalid or you didn't have any teeth, the dental arts were not exactly what they are now back then, uh, you would take your meat, you would cook it, you'd cut it up, and you would press it in one of these to extract the juice so you could get your nutrients. They are completely obsolete and have no real functional purpose anymore, but we're gonna try it today. We're gonna juice some meat. I have just a little piece of steak here um, that I'm just going to slice up into some smaller pieces so they'll fit in our press. My feeling is probably that something around medium rare is probably going to be the best because obviously if you cook the meat too long, all the juice is going to evaporate. Let's give the meat juice press a try. Raise the actual press part. This whole thing is made of cast iron. The press itself is tinned so that the tin won't react with any food. And I'm going to take some of my meat, fill up the hopper here patented 1884, says on here. Then I'm gonna put the press itself in place, turn the screw, and press the meat. And now we have meat juice, circa 1884. It's so weird. Tastes like really dry beef. Yeah, press works. Remove all the juice from the meat. So now we're going to taste all of these juices, now that we've explored all these different methods in juicing. I'll start with the lemon juice. Looks good. Clean, no pulp, no seeds. Now we'll move on to Knapp's juicer. Orange juice. Good small pieces of pulp, just the way I like it. The Handy Andy juice extractor, which seems to have yielded us more juice than the Knapp's juicer. About the same, it's good. A little bit of pulp. And finally, the meat juice. Yeah, tastes like liquid steak. So we've explored some vintage juicers. Uh, there are a lot of other kinds out there. We, of course, sell modern juicers here at the Brooklyn Kitchen uh, that none of them function quite like the meat juice press does. But, you know, feel free to try your hand and enjoy your juice. Mm -hmm.